I was trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing with the hit, okay? I work hard to make it, okay, I got it, right? Careers are incredibly challenging to build. It takes years of intense training to try to perfect them. But guess what? One wrong move can lead to a rapid downfall. Whether it's hate speech, murder allegations, several rappers have destroyed their careers. In this video, we'll unravel the dramatic falls from grace in their lives. Let's start with Ricky Lamar Hawk, also known as Salento, an American rapper known for his 2015 hit single, Watch Me, Whip, Nay Nay. The viral song Song rose to number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. He also released Fresh Out of High School in 2018 and his album Skyra Lyrics in October 2020. Fast forward to February 1, 2021, when his life crashed before his eyes. He was arrested in DeKalb County, Georgia. The then 23-year-old was accused of shooting Frederick Rooks, his cousin, multiple times. The incident occurred outside his home in the Panthersville area. Rooks's body was dumped by the roadside. Thankfully, passersby heard the shots and alerted the police. When the cops arrived at the scene, they found a lifeless man on the floor. He was officially pronounced dead, and investigation started. Detectives confirmed that he was shot eight times in his face and leg. They also identified the victim as Silento's cousin, thanks to the driver's license in his wallet. The rapper was named a prime suspect in the killing. Silento has been indicted in DeKalb County for the murder of his cousin. Here's how investigators traced him. First, they believed that the suspect could have been one of the residents at one of the houses on the street. Yes, the occupants in the houses knew him, but he didn't live there. At the time, investigators had no clue who the suspect could be. They gathered videos from multiple security cameras. The clip showed several cars fleeing from the scene, but then it grabbed a crucial piece of evidence. It captured one gunshot and Salento was the culprit. The Del Cobb County jury handed him a four count charge of felony murder malice murder, possession of a firearm, and aggravated assault. Salento's entanglement with the law was no isolated incident. Prior to this latest legal trouble, he had experienced several run-ins with authority. His woes began in August 2020 when he faced not one, but two arrests, one for domestic violence and another for gun charges. A few months later, in October, he was caught speeding. These incidents foreshadowed the legal storm that lay ahead. His legal trouble troubles weren't confined to the United States. In 2017, he faced a ban that left him temporarily stranded in the United Arab Emirates, a far cry from the international stardom he had once enjoyed. With each legal confrontation, his future seemed more uncertain. In the wake of his most recent arrest, Salento's publicist Chanel Hudson revealed a deeply concerning aspect of his life. She explained that he was grappling with a series of mental health issues. However, she reassured his fans that his legal team was diligently working to resolve his situation. Her plea for their prayers and support during this trying period underscored the gravity of his predicament. Despite the rapper's involvement with countless charitable programs, his career is long gone. Now let's look at Macklemore. I had a lot of moments of like, I can't believe this is happening. This is changing my life. Back in 2012, Seattle rapper Macklemore was one of hip hop's next rising stars. He dropped his hit single thrift shop when pop music was reaching its peak. He was grouped with other white rappers like Eminem and Lil Dicky. A few years later, his rap career died a natural death, and the likes of Jack Harlow and Post Malone took over. What happened to him? This artist had his first break in 2000 with his mixtape, Open Your Eyes. This motivated him to work on his first album, The Language of My World, which he released in 2005. The following year, he met producer Ryan Lewis. They became friends and worked on projects together. It all started with a brilliant idea. Two visionary individuals came together to create the musical sensation known as Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, following in the footsteps of renowned hip-hop duos. Their journey began with the release of a string of singles and an EP. But the turning point arrived in 2012 when they unleashed The Heist. This album defied expectations, debuting at an impressive number two on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. What made this feat even more remarkable was that they were independent artists with limited promotional resources. The world began to take notice, and soon, offers and opportunities flooded in from every corner of the globe. Their path to stardom seemed destined.
destined for greatness. Yet, as their story unfolded, something unexpected occurred that would reshape the course of their journey. The 2014 Grammys was also a game changer in his career. That year, Macklemore and Pot Ryan Lewis scored seven nominations and Kendrick Lamar had six. In a shocking twist, Macklemore swept three out of four rap field nominations. To date, there's still a heated debate over whether his music should be considered rap. The most heartbreaking of all was that he beat other hip hop giants like Eminem, Drake, J. Cole, Jay Z, and Kanye West. After the event, he felt guilty, so he posted an apology to Kendrick Lamar on social media. It read in part, It's weird and sucks that I robbed you. I was gonna say that during the speech. Then the music started playing during my speech, and I froze. This apology would have been sincere if it wasn't posted all over social media, as it came across as the most dishonest post on the internet at the time. When Macklemore's Grammy win stirred a wave of controversy and discussion regarding racial dynamics within the music industry, Kendrick Lamar responded with grace and integrity. He acknowledged Macklemore's text on social media, in which the rapper apologized for winning the Grammys over Lamar. When he sent it to me, I was like, okay, you know, I can see him feeling that type of way because he's a good dude. Lamar's response exemplified his character. He embraced the gesture with humility and championed the notion that the real victory was in raising awareness about the systemic issues facing artists of color in the music world. Kendrick Lamar's measured reaction further solidified his reputation as not just a remarkable artist, but also a beacon of social consciousness and change within the music industry. From 2012 to 2015, Macklemore collaborated with several artists and lived the dream. But then, in 2016, he released another album, The Unruly Mess I've Made. Unfortunately, it didn't set the charts ablaze like previous one. In 2017, he took to Instagram to announce that he and his partner, Lewis, were parting ways. Rumor has it that they split due to the failure of his last album. From then onwards, Macklemore's rap career was ruined. Now what's with the baby? Character and me and my intentions, um, that's something I'll never let like, I'm not gonna let you, you know what I mean, make me, I'm not a bad person. It is often said that controversy creates cash, but this trick didn't work in DaBaby's favor. Born Jonathan Kirk, this American rapper burst onto the scene in 2019 with his first album, Baby on Baby. The project peaked at no seven on the Billboard 200. DaBaby had fans of all genders. He had a unique rhyme flow, made fun videos, and played with beat. Later that year, he dropped Kirk, another chart-topping album with two platinum singles singles, intro and bop. He carried his fame into 2020 with his album, Blame It on Baby. Along the line, his fans noticed something was off about his music. People realized that he was rapping the same way on every beat. This revelation marked the gradual end of his rap career. After this eye-opener, he released the infamous Sway in the Morning Freestyle. The piece was roasted on social media. Each new song failed to capture the audience as his pre-pandemic songs did. Rather than work on his craft, the baby chose a more toxic path. In the summer of 2021, he took a break between songs to make a vile comment. He slammed those living with HIV and AIDS and insulted gay men. Celebrities and fans were not having it. Renowned British singer Elton John and distinguished writer George Johnson didn't hold back in criticizing him for his offensive anti-gay remark. I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called, because I'm a live performer, I'm the best. The baby did offer an apology afterward, but it vanished from sight as quickly as a blink. As the backlash against him intensified, the rapper regrettably continued to display a troubling and harmful side of himself. He shared numerous videos of him forcibly ejecting the mother of his child from his house, accompanied by a barrage of insults. His open display of hatred towards Megan Thee Stallion, including performing with Tory Lanez, who faced accusations of shooting her only served to further tarnish his reputation. His attempts to tarnish her image come across as desperate and have led to even more of his fans turning their backs on him. Even more bizarre is that he believes the conspiracy theories about why his album failed. He blames the LGBTQ community for his downfall. While this may be the case, he ignores the fact that he isn't making good music. Why does he insist on the same style, flow, and structure all the time? If there's anything the entertainment industry 
history has taught us, it is that quality trumps offense. Even when individuals face serious legal issues, society often continues to admire their talent. Take Kodak Black, for instance. Despite his extensive criminal record, he recently took the stage at the BET Hip Hop Awards. Safe to say that DaBaby destroyed his rap career himself. He was a victim of bad music and cancel culture. Is CeeLo Green the worst of the four? When I had a reason to fight, you know what I'm saying, like I became a warrior. You know? Years ago, the sky was the limit for CeeLo Green's career. The rapper achieved international success after forming the hip hop group Goody Mob. He was also a famous TV personality and graced our screen as a coach on The Voice for the first three seasons. But in the mid 2010s, his career tumbled from grace. From criminal charges to hateful comments, Green's rap career nosedived into the abyss. The first big blow to his reputation occurred in 2011 when he posted a homophobic comment on Twitter. When a fan gave a negative review of one of his live performances, he responded on Twitter. I respect your criticism, but be fair. People enjoyed last night. I'm guessing you're gay and my masculinity offended you? He ended up using the F word. His followers were not pleased with this response. Green angered them more by saying he shouldn't have to apologize for defending himself. With more critics hitting on him, he backed down and changed his tone. In 2012, things got messier. That year, a woman accused the Forget You singer of putting drugs in her drink and sexually assaulting her. After a lengthy investigation, the LAPD dropped the sexual assault charge and slapped him with a felony count of supplying ecstasy. After pleading no contest to the charge, he ran to Twitter to clarify what happened. If someone is passed out, they're not even with you consciously. So with implies consent. People who have really been rude remember. The insensitive comment damaged his career further. He claimed to have left the voice willingly, but we hear he did it to avoid being fired. He has since been canceled and people aren't paying much attention to his music. If you know any rapper who suffered a similar fate, let us know in the comments below. See you in the next video.